and welcome to another edition of Harona and I am Harona Drame. Today my guest is Mansata Kuran. Mansata, thanks for joining me on this uh, special edition. I call it special because I've been trying to get and secure this interview for months. Absolutely. Now that you're here, welcome to the Gambia and to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Harona. You're such a pretty, busy young woman. Uh, what do you do? Uh, quite a lot of things. Um, predominantly, I run a health tech startup, very early stage uh, virtual reality health technology startup that um, we empower dementia patients to use virtual reality technology that helps with anxiety and depression through reminiscence therapy. Um, I've also done teaching. Um, I used to work in the city. Um, but yeah, that's what I do now. That's my passion, mental health. Mental health is your passion, but what's your journey to get to that role? So it's been quite a long journey. Um, this, I mean, as a child, I anticipated I wanted to do something to help people. Um, my dad was a medical doctor, so I knew I wanted to care for people, um, but I didn't see myself going down the medical pathway. Um, I loved uh, finance, economics, so I thought, okay, that's one way I'll explore. Uh, went down that road, did it for about five years in the city, in the UK. And, um, but it didn't fulfill me really. Um, mm. You know, you can have this high-flying career, but, um, but inside is what matters and making a difference, that's what always mattered to me. Um, mm. And I always wanted to come back and do something for Africa, for Gambia. I've always been a global, so I, I never really thought Gambia, I always thought global. Mm. Um, what could I contribute? Um, and because I didn't like that face-to-face, -face, seeing people in pain, I saw technology as a tool, as like the power to scale um, to help people but not necessarily having to be there and mm. that's how I thought okay mental health is an area I want to explore especially in Africa where there's still this stigma and taboo and I found technology to be a fun way to explore that because otherwise it's depressing and people don't like talking about it or avoid it um, so yeah and it took off like that people people like the idea and um, that's how I started people like the idea but what were the ideas mm -hmm. around you growing up as a child mm -hmm. in Gambia so growing up uh, in Gambia it was quite a long time ago I'm a lot older than I look um, <laughs> <laughs> honestly um, so Really, everything was very traditional, you know, um, the typical, you know, lawyer, doctor, accountant that was just seen as success. And I think that sort of influenced me and there wasn't a lot of creativity around or even if it was, it was not seen as something um, taken seriously. Um, and it was part of the reasons why I left, when I left the city, I set up the foundation because I wanted to inject more creativity and the arts into schools and um, that's what I did. Um, so our foundation, Freestyle for Africa Foundation, we've um, sent some equipment here in the Gambia in my old school and we're encouraging the arts and music but from a more scientific point of view. Um, so I'm trying to encourage that um, Arts and music can actually help with the brain to build the prefrontal cortex of children. So a lot of people aren't aware of this. They think all oh, music and arts is just, you know, kids do it in the playground. But when you actually engage in the arts, you're opening parts of the brain. So I'm, I'm really into neuroscience and how the different sides of the brain works. And um, so you're encouraging that child to be more well-rounded. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, I was so lucky as a child, I played musical instrument and I ended up doing math, so you know there's that link between music and math. So mm -hmm. um, I'd encourage more uh, parents to get their children trained in musical instrument because you're unlocking a part that can help them in future with those maths and sciences and technology. Because I feel that inspired me, that helped me because I had that creativity. I could, and I became a creative technologist, and that's how I got into it. So yeah, very passionate about the arts, and I'm seeing that change now. A lot of people are exploring entrepreneurship, innovation. Um, now I'm so impressed like with the Gambia, I've been here, you know, I went to the home and coming of it. I was very privi privileged to be invited to the home and coming um, mm -hmm. panel mm -hmm. and it's, it's great to see the entrepreneurship here in the Gambia, you know, people getting involved in e-commerce, uh, fashion tech mm -hmm. um, and I see that growing. It's, it's a whole new, um, I'd say it's, it's, it's a whole new, um, how do I say it, um, industry now compared to when I was growing up before it was just these are the careers and now you can be whoever you want to be and that's because of the uh, technology age now we're in so it's impressive you talked about your dad's influence mm -hmm. uh, in the care business as a medical person himself mm -hmm. um, now you you sound like you grew up 
largely outside of the Gambia. How do you do the comparisons, the influences from your beginnings in mm -hmm. the Gambia and now your global knowledge mm -hmm. plus the, your dad's profession around which you grew as mm -hmm. well? How would you say that inspired, molded or even shaped your life? Absolutely. I'd say I'm half and half because mm. my first 16 years were, now I'd say my age, first 16 years were in the Gambia and these next 16 years were outside. Mm. Um, so I've been very lucky mm. in that I've, my earlier years really imprinted that hard work ethic because I saw my dad get up every day, like Monday to Sunday working. It was part of the reasons why I didn't want to be a doctor because I never got to see him, but he was a, such a hard worker. And I think that work ethic is something that's not seen a lot. And I think that's really helped propel me in this short time space and give me the success I've had because I've always had that imprinted in me as a young child. Um, and just seeing the empathy and care he had for his patients, I think that's what I grew up with and that's what I learned. I've always learned, you know, be kind and always help people and I got that from him. He's a very generous man. He's helped so many people and that's something I've always carried on within me and I'm really happy I got that grounding. The next 16 years I would say helped with the innovation and that global thinking because I think initially I had that box where I thought, oh, these are the only pathways for me. This is what success is according to Gambia or Africa. Um, but my next 16 years really encouraged, oh wow, success is anything you want it to be and getting involved in like leadership development in the UK uh, training which um, we're not really taught here like in schools you're taught okay how to cram things really mm -hmm. but you're not taught how to practice and put things into practice and think differently so I think that's how I combine technology and medicine so I got the medicine part from my early years and the technology from my later years and combined those two become that creative technologist because a creative technologist is someone that uses new ways of thinking and innovation to apply to medicine or other areas I chose medicine so in a way it's it's almost like I'd say I am a doctor but a technical doctor <laughs> a technical sense. doctor <laughs> yeah. and that would make absolute sense yeah. we're going to take our first break here mm -hmm. when we come back more with Mansata Quran stay with us Welcome back to Harona with my guest, Mansata Kurang, a creative technologist. I don't know if there's any such term. I've just heard it today, actually, having worked in the creative space myself. Now, um, tell me, what's your view of mental health in general? So, I say it depends on which part of the world you're in. There's still, I think, overall, globally, there's... Um, there's still a bit of stigma and taboo attached to mental health. Um, so even growing up here in the Gambia, um, there's this notion of people finding it very difficult subject to talk about. Um, it's, it's something people are com uncomfortable talking about. Um, I'd say, for instance, in the UK, um, there's a lot more awareness going on and people are a little more accepting and open, um, especially women. So I think where there's a problem is men's mental health as well um, where you know men are encouraged to you know you have to be a man you know in Gambia they said bull joy you know you have to be strong mm -hmm. and you know men are humans as well um, so we should encourage people to talk a little more you mm -hmm. know and um, I really want there to be more therapists even if um, they're not comfortable talking um, in the home space or mm -hmm. around the workplace um, there should be independent people where people can go and talk freely it makes such a huge difference and um, to just 
let it out rather than keep it in because it's going to fester inside and that does not end up well. Um, adult mental health, which is where I, I, I'm based in, uh, so older people, dementia, um, mm. that's another thing that's not well known. So it, especially in the Gambia, they just go, you know, just, just leave her, she's old, she's crazy. Mm. But the privilege I had was actually researching into dementia and mental health and knowing what people go through when they are experiencing these things. It's not a fun thing, it's not something to be laughed about. They go through serious depression and anxiety and loneliness. So for me, setting up VR Revival, the main vision I had was the campaign, doing it in Africa, which is why I did my BBC campaign. Um, so that it's known worldwide that this is an issue and people should be more open and talk about it. Um, so my view is it's improving, but I think still a lot of work needs to be done, um, especially in Africa. And I feel like technology is one way that people can address it. So it can sort of be that, that bridge between family members and the mental. So if you're not comfortable talking about it face to face, our technology can be used to learn about the illness, what the symptoms are, where you can get help. So that's that's the vision I have of what our product can do in the future. So people can go and learn about it and then it will be that gateway for them to, you know, go and get the help they need. Because it is a big problem if it's not addressed. It, it leads to quite a lot of serious, serious illnesses if not addressed. So I want more people talking about it. So this technology, mm. what is it? So currently, um, so it's the very first product um, I made. Um, it's immersive, so it's almost like it's virtual reality technology. What it means is you put on a headset and you're taking it into another world. So it's not rocket science, um, but it's creating a world that you feel calm and peaceful in. So for instance, one thing we can do, say you're sat here, um, but you love the beach, but perhaps you're so old, you can't even walk to the beach. You can put on the headset and literally you'll be at the, like it. It's almost like you're there. So you can see the waves coming towards you. You can hear the seagulls. So it's, it has audio, it has visual, and it has, it's immersive. So it's 360. So it's almost like you're projected into another world. So how we use it for dementia patients is, um, especially because uh, we tested this product in the UK, most of them were diaspora. So say someone, a lady was from Ghana, but like her parents were, um, sorry, her, her children and everyone else was back home and she was on her own in a care home there, uh, which was really sad. So she didn't see her family for a while. So what I could do was um, take videos and photos of places in Ghana that she knew, put that into this virtual world, put it on her in either Google Cardboard or Oculus Go, and then she'd be there and then it's, it's it's just an emo it's a little thing, but it's so emotional when they, they get to see, wow, this is my home country, this is my home. It's those beautiful moments we create. I'm hoping to get it to a place where it can actually be beneficial. So it is still beneficial in terms of reminiscing about the place and remembering, because dement with dementia, you forget your, your earlier mem your later memories. So all you remember are your childhood memories. So it's nice to recall that. Um, so it's not something that it's used for a cure. There isn't a cure, unfortunately, for dementia um, still. So all we can do is help make them comfortable, and that's what I'm trying to do, is really bring, bring families back together. I think, ultimately, that's what it is. It's that social experience. Because it's such high-tech technology, these old people can't use it on their own. So it's almost like I purposely did that. I used the highest form of technology to, to address this, because then it requires the younger generation to work with them. So that brings families together. So that was the whole purpose. But where, where are you heading with this? Mm. I mean, it's good to relieve certain memories mm. and for that moment, mm -hmm. for those minutes, mm -hmm. for whatever time, mm -hmm. however long it takes, mm -hmm. you're there in that space, yeah. in that positive environment in your head. Yeah. But what happens mm -hmm. when that goes away? Or are you looking at it from, since you said it's a pilot project, mm -hmm. are you looking at it at expanding, improving, and yep. scaling it up? Of course. I mean, you have to. That, that's, that's the whole point. Um, like, right now, like you said, it's, it's just a pilot project. The thing we're doing differently is the educational element. So I'm very um, passionate about that because I feel this, that knowledge gap 
and um, that's what we're incorporating within the app. So you can sit with um, your grandparent or your, and actually learn about the illness. So one thing we're looking to do is, obviously not everyone speaks English, um, so more local languages so people can actually learn about the disease using the technology. So you know the younger person can explain to the older person. And, but with that, they're getting at least getting that interaction and it's fun. So that's what I want to incorporate. And um, t looking to take it further into where it can actually be beneficial, like medically, um, mm -hmm. that's the next stage. But again, that's a whole other stage. It comes with you know, the funding and all that. So I self-funded this, and I've been doing this pilot myself. Um, so yeah, that will take a while. It's all in the research phase now. Um, mm -hmm. So that's where I'm looking to get it, where it's more um, medically approved and people can actually use it as a therapy rather than more of an education element and just um, something that's enjoyed within families. And uh, let's assume mm -hmm. that, that is you come to Gambia now, you discover mm -hmm. that dementia probably is not as prevalent in mm -hmm. Gambia, for example. For example, that it's more to do with youth. Mm. young people with what we locally call NAVs, mm -hmm. just this idea of wanting to be in Europe and not being able to go mm. and that sinks in frustration and we see a lot of young people mm. hallucinating mm. sometimes abusing drugs mm. alcohol and other things mm -hmm, mm -hmm. would you when you go to a community like that mm -hmm. remodel and or modify this invention for that category of people so the whole point of technology is scaling and that's, you know, you can scale into different industries. And even my technology, I use it for myself. So it's, um, you want to help everyone at the end of the day. The reason why I focused on dementia is, like I said, it's because it's, it was a, a way, people don't know very much about it, so I wanted to raise awareness. But yeah, that's totally possible. There are apps that um, help the youth and um, you know, virtual reality applications that can be used to help young people. For instance, you know, if they want to know what's Paris is like or London is like um, but also on a more he mental health capacity as well that was my ultimate goal and vision um, as I said because I'm starting small it's just me and um, I chose to focus more on um, this particular side of mental health but the, the dream is for it to be able to grow into other areas of mental health I know youth Youth mental health is a big problem, not just here, it's worldwide. Um, and yes, that's definitely possible. And, and one way, I think it's, it's steps, basically. Once I conquer one area, that's definitely, it can be used for that as well, absolutely. We'll take our second break here. When we come back, final words with Manseta Kura. Stay with us. Welcome back to Harona with my guest this week, uh, Mansata Kura. So, Mansata, mm -hmm. tell me, technology, mm -hmm. we don't usually see a lot of women, young women, mm -hmm. especially from the Gambian context, being so involved in getting their hands dirty mm -hmm. with technology as it is, as mm -hmm. you are. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you say to those young women and girls who perhaps are watching this interview? How can they get started? How can they get themselves started? Wow, so um, so how I got started, well mine was quite unconventional because um, <laughs> I'm a problem solver, I'm very curious, so I probably started off the hard way because I just wanted to figure things out on my own. But one thing I would say is, you know, the internet's now available to everyone. So one of the things that really helped me was, firstly, I'd say um, see where you are um, in your journey. So if you have skills already, technology doesn't have to mean, you know, that's, that's the typical technologists, you know, so the engineering coding, uh, those who build websites, so that's the typical. But that's not what technology is on its own. I consider technology to be anything digital, digital that can, you know, scale. 
So that can be, you know, you can be a user interface person, so you do the design. So it doesn't need to be back end, which is the coding, it can be front end. So you can be the UX designer, so you sort of uh, look at the, the design of things or the planning of things. You can um, be a data scientist as well, so looking at how to organize data. Um, you can go into quality assurance, so things like um, cybersecurity. So I want people to broaden their minds more. Technology doesn't mean coding, so you know what I did required very little coding and now there's so many platforms you can use that can help you build, even build apps from scratch and um, even Apple, you know, they have the Swift, you, they have a program, a Swift program where you can actually go and learn for free and um, there's mm -hmm. Udemy courses, um, Coursera, these have courses from, you know, Cambridge, Harvard, Princeton available for free and, mm -hmm. you know, everyone here has access to internet so I think if you do want to get into technology, you can. Even if you are a marketing person, you know, a technology company needs a marketing assistant, you know, it doesn't mean, I'd like people to think more broader, you don't need to be a coder, I mean, if you can, that's perfect, but it's not for everyone, so I'd say firstly, try it, and get on these free courses and try coding, it takes time, um, but it, it's not for everyone, I have to say it's difficult, you, it needs quite a lot of dedication, and you need to check whether that's the career for you. Um, also Facebook groups, so join Facebook groups um, of women in technology and attend conferences. Um, for instance, I was in the home and coming, I met a lot of uh, technologists in the Gambia, you know, mm -hmm. doing amazing things, Iberada, you know, people doing e-commerce, fashion, tech, um, amazing. Um, you know, the TAP conference as well, um, we'll be doing lots of, I'm, I'm sure I'll be meeting lots of entrepreneurs there. Um, so attend conferences like that and get to meet people and ask them about their journey. Um, I'd also say um, if you can um, afford it, maybe join, I don't know, in the Gambia, maybe do, they do coding schools, I'm not too sure, um, but, or even studying computer science if you're that young and you, because I see tech as the future and I was really pleased, I met a, a girl a few days ago, she does um, um, medicine mm -hmm. and IT systems and I was like, Mm -hmm. Fantastic, you know, yep. you can learn on the side, even if you're, you have a career and you think, oh, there's no way, you know, I had another career, I did some teaching as well, and I was doing that part-time, that was how I funded this venture, you know, mm -hmm. so you can save, um, in the meantime, make sure you save um, to teach yourself online, or, um, and then you can take your, your venture later. So I wouldn't say just jump into it like I did. Um, you learn the hard way. Um, so I'd say do what you do, either if you're really young, um, get into an IT course or computer science. If you're, you feel you're never too old, you know, I've seen 55 year olds learn to code and run successful ventures. So um, you can make it, it doesn't matter how old you are. If you're interested in it, um, you can learn. So I'd say really first look at your um, where you are and see if you can apply your skills already in technology so it doesn't matter if you're like in HR like you can work in a tech company and then get in that way um, mm -hmm. secondly you can learn online um, and thirdly networking so go to conferences so, so what is next for Mansata? what's next for me wow so I'm very passionate about the UN sustainable development goals so uh, my area is health and well-being, um, so goal number three. Um, so I was in Asia recently and I uh, met a group of entrepreneurs who are very passionate about that. So, you know, I do see a part in, you know, something around the UN initiatives, like, because sometimes you need to be within that, the, the industry, the setting to actually push those goals. So. Who knows, you know, my life is never, it's, it's, it's different every single year, you know, the, the previous year I was running a foundation, now I'm running a startup, you know, next year, well, this year I could be working with the UN to help meet the goals and running, but this mental health and technology will always be my passion, I'll always be doing that, no matter what. Um, so yeah, I really want to see progress onto, like I said, a more medical, where it's medically approved and uh, people can use it not just for dementia, but can use it for mental health, for different age ranges, whether it's youth or the aging. Um, but really, the dream is, you know, using immersive technologies um, in low resource economies, you know, like um, in Africa, South Asia, Latin America. Um, so really thinking global, uh, I'd really like to see technology scale to help hard to reach areas because, you know, we have the fastest growing mobile 
technology. Mm -hmm. So people have access to this. You know, you can go to Kudang, where I'm from, and everyone has the latest. They have even more advanced smartphones than me. So I'm just like, wow. Um, so you know, and and that's all down to you know people being curious and the youth having all that access. So if they have that access, let's use technology for good. I think we can use it to save the world. Let's take uh, use technology for good. How do you see Gambia now that you're traveling in other places, observing technology, mm. observing growth mm. in that creative space? Mm. And uh, how do you compare Gambia? You think we're edging towards it? Are we evolving? Are we improving? Is technology taking root in Gambia? So I have to be like, I had some misconceptions when I first came. I thought, oh, maybe we're a bit behind, but I was so impressed. Um, when I went to the home and coming and saw these up and coming entrepreneurs and people doing computer science and coding, you know, someone was telling me about Python and, you know, they were learning Java, Java, you know, these are things that people are starting to learn in England and so on. I was like, wow, this is fantastic. Um, so I would say we're still probably um, a little behind compared to con um, countries like Ghana and the big economies because I see a lot of um, tech activity there. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd like to see more investment in tech in the Gambia and more hubs, I'd say, um, that where young people can go and actually learn how to code and things like that. Um, I'd say there's a lot of scope, especially now with um, the internet um, there's still a restraint and this is why when I was big in my first step I was very um, conscious of making it offline because I know we still have the problem with electricity and internet and mm -hmm. something like VR and augmented reality they're uh, very powerful tools mm -hmm. and it wouldn't run on our Wi-Fi maybe it might but um, it needs very quick Wi-Fi and speed so we do have the limitations in terms of um, our uh, speed and um, sort of voice recognition and um, the the capacity that and even take. dependable electricity yeah yeah exactly exactly so I think that offline thing um, was a, was a good call for my project but um, it limits it if you have it offline you can't have the app too big then because mm -hmm. otherwise it's gonna eat everyone's credit mm -hmm. um, so yeah there are challenges um, so it's about adapting but that's what you do with technology it one size doesn't fit all you know it, it might work in the UK but it might not work very well here so for me the next stage would be seeing how I can adapt each of my different technologies to the different regions but I see us up and coming I'd, I'd like to see more big firms like Google and Facebook um, investing in the Gambia and setting up tech hubs here and you know um, that's what helped me back but I was in the UK and um, so that was easier so but I see companies like that you know going into places like Ghana I was in Ghana a few months ago and uh, I was really impressed with you know Google um, hubs there so um, I'd like to see something like that in Gambia definitely when you were at the design stage your view mm. and vision mm. of this product mm. and when it came out mm. how do you contrast them your view, what you wanted, your expectations, and ultimately what happened with the reception of it. So it's, this is the thing in me, it came out better than I thought. Um, so I'm, I'm very, <laughs> how do I say it without, I'm very determined, that's the thing. When I have a vision, even if, okay, I say, okay, I'm going to do something within the year and I don't achieve it, it's always imprinted. So I studied the brain a lot. It's always imprinted in my subconscious. I know it's there. I want to achieve it and I will achieve it. So even if it's not a year, in two years, if I make a promise to myself and I make to, a promise to others that I really want to do something, I find a way. And this is where the creativity comes in and I feel so important. Like STEM, you know, the science, engineering, technology um, and mathematics is important, so important. But I think that arts, entrepreneurship, innovation needs to be in there so rather than just them look at steamed um, so bringing all that together I think um, really helps you build your vision but also when you're stuck so I've had a lot of challenges in this journey you know I didn't have the funding I didn't have the team and you know, I didn't have the skills even so all that I had to learn by myself um, but like I said you don't need to do it all on your own as well so I found a community and I found um, mentors that helped me along the way and I think that helped make my product even better in the end so you know I, I just wanted to create something to raise campaign and I didn't think it would take off as it did um, and now I'm looking forward to improving that so it's, it's just getting better and better by way of last question what would be the last words 
Wow, my last words. Um, I would really say dream big, you know. I, I, I know a lot of people saying, oh, you really can make it in Gambia. Yeah, you can, but think bigger, think bigger. You know, with technology now, your, Gamb your business doesn't just have to be in Gambia. Even if, you know, I met a, a, an amazing lady, um, Kaba girl, they call her. Mm -hmm. She sells Kaba, mm -hmm. but she's importing all over the world. You know, you don't have to limit yourself. And this is really why I wanted to come and talk. It's don't limit yourself to just this box, you know, think global. Thank you very much, Mansada. It's been a pleasure having you on Haruna. Thank you for having me, Haruna. Thank you so much. Good luck. Thank you.